Welcome to Boardroom Broadcasts, speaking with listed companies from around the world. You can stay up to date with all our content by visiting www.boardroombroadcasts.com and clicking on subscribe. Today's guest is Andrew McLean, CEO of Surtex. Appointed to the position in June of 2017, Andrew has over 20 years of experience with a track record of success in regional and global leadership roles. Before joining Surtex, his most recent roles were CEO, Applied Sterilization Technologies and Laboratories with Synergy Health, and with Steris Corporation as Senior VP of Corporate Strategy. Andrew has a Master of Business Administration from the Macquarie Graduate School of Management and a Bachelor of Economics from Macquarie University. Andrew, thanks for joining us today. Good morning. So, firstly, let, let's uh, uh, let's open it up. Can you just explain uh, what Certex Medical does? Sure. Uh, Certex Medical is the leading global provider of what's called a radioembolic. What it is is tiny microspheres that have yttrium ninety radiation bound to them. And those are injected into the blood vessels that directly supply uh, cancerous liver tumors. Uh, And the whole concept is that the radioactive beads, they lodge in the capillaries surrounding those tumors and kill the tumors, but equally sparing the healthy tissue around it. So that's where the name selective internal radiation therapy comes from, or CERT for short. What exactly is this technology? Can you give us a, a quick rundown on, on oncology and, and where your product sort of fits in the market here? Sure. So we, we essentially service uh, the, the oncology marketplace. Uh, and at the moment, the product is approved for use uh, in many, many markets around the globe for uh, different types of liver cancer tumors, uh, except in the United States where we have one indication which is for metastatic colorectal cancer. Uh, I won't get into the, into the grainy details, but pretty much across the world, except for in the US, we have what's called a pan-liver uh, indication or regulatory approval. And what that means is that our product can be used to treat any form of cancer uh, that is attacking the liver. Radiation, as you and your listeners are probably aware, is agnostic to the actual type of cancer. So the radiation is going to kill any type of cancer, and that's why across many, many markets across the globe, we have that pan-liver indication. And you're relatively new to the role of CEO with Surtex. Do you want to um, just elaborate a little bit on your, your background and experience and, and how that has led to you uh, uh, you know, taking the seat uh, with, with Surtex? Sure. Well, I've been in medical devices all of my career. I commenced uh, my journey with Beckton Dickinson in Sydney, Australia, uh, in in the marketing uh, department, looking after the anesthesia systems portfolio, then progressed through different roles in in, uh, BD Australia, New Zealand to marketing manager. Uh, I left, went to Pfizer, ran a small business unit with them for Australia, New Zealand, uh, then went to China in a bigger role, then came back to Australia in a bigger role, then went back to China in a bigger role, then came back to Australia. And after seven years with Pfizer, uh, I actually returned to Beckton Dickinson and ran the medical division of uh, BD uh, for Australia and New Zealand. Did that for about three and a half years and did a decent job. So BD asked me to go across to their global headquarters in New Jersey in the United States, where I worked in a variety of roles for, again, about three years. I did two or three different roles in those three years. And then a smaller British company called Synergy Health approached me uh, for a much larger global role. So smaller business, but bigger role, more responsibility. So went to Synergy Health, uh, did a decent job with them. And then that business was uh, subsequently acquired by Steris Corporation based out of Cleveland in the United States. So I chose to stay on with Steris, um, did a lot of work with the integration of the two businesses and headed up a business unit called Hospital Sterilization Services. Uh, after a year or so with Steris, um, I was approached by uh, the Certex organization to take on the global CEO role there. So that led me to Certex Medical. And I, I've got to say, Certex is just a wonderful company, really enjoy the mission that they're on to help people with inoperable uh, liver cancer. 
what has it been like working in all these um, uh, different economies and in different nations? Are, are there takeaways from that in terms of, uh, you know, bringing something to the table of what that means for the for Surtex now that you're in the role? Look, there's, there's plenty I could mention on that topic, but, you know, to be brief, what I would say is anyone looking to expand their career and learn and, and, and grow and develop their career, the learnings you obtain from working in different countries, in different cultures, across different businesses, really you can't beat that. So that would be my takeaway. Okay. Um, and with Surtex Medical, you touched on this uh, a little bit earlier. Can you uh, elaborate on, on how this radiation works within the device? Sure. Well, it, it, it's not actually within the device. It's it, it's quite technical and it is proprietary and, and know-how and, and, and secrecy is all very important here. But what we actually do is we bind the yttrium-90 radiation to these microspheres. That's the that's the secret source in the technology that we do. And there's, there's a proprietary methodology we use to undertake that process to ensure the radiation doesn't leach off the microspheres. And then, as I said earlier, the microspheres are very carefully injected into very specific blood vessels that the radiologist, the interventional radiologist, determines is supplying the cancerous liver tumors. And then they lodge in the very thin capillaries of those blood vessels that are supplying the cancerous tumors. And then there's a cloud of radiation over those tumors that, that kills the tumors and uh, at the same time sparing the healthy tissue in the liver. Because these patients are very sick, the last thing you want to do is um, you know, kill healthy liver tissue in addition to the tumors. And again, that's why we call it selective internal radiation therapy. Mm, okay. The, the medical uh, space, is, it's very competitive with people who are providing leading-edge technologies. I, I assume that there are competitors to you. So what, what makes sort of your position unique in the market? Oh, there's a number of factors. I can't go into all of them. But one of the key ones is that the specific gravity of our technology, the, the weight of the spheres, is very similar to typical blood cells. And the consequence of that is, as the interventional radiologist is is injecting those spheres into the bloodstream, they are carried into the depths of those very fine capillaries, rather than having a sediment effect and you know injecting them, then them falling down and and uh, not lodging where they should be lodging. So that's that's one of the benefits of our technology. Uh, some of the other benefits are, and this is a key one, is that the dose that goes into the patient with our technology can be very specifically tailored to what is actually required by the individual patient. The other key competitor we have out in the marketplace, you cannot get that level of precision. And that's one of the reasons why uh, we are the market leader uh, in, in this category. And you mentioned being the market leader. So can you talk about the, the growth potential? Well, the growth potential is actually quite enormous for this technology. In the markets within which we currently operate today, in the markets within which we have regulatory approvals today, we believe we only have roughly 5% market penetration. So today we, we have a business that's roughly $240 million. Uh, if there's 95% of runway left for growth in the markets within which we currently have regulatory approvals, I think your listeners would agree that's a huge amount of growth potential. But in addition to that, uh, we are working towards uh, enhanced label indications for our product in the US. So moving from just a metastatic colorectal cancer indication to a hepatocellular carcinoma indication, that'll expand our opportunities significantly. And then at the moment, we don't have regulatory approvals for some very significant markets such as China and Japan, where there's a very large incidence of liver cancer across those countries. So just those three initiatives would open up probably another 40% growth potential for the global organization. So my next question was going to ask you where you're headed, but it sounds like you're already touching on these into these markets. What, what are the next steps to do that? And is there a, a timeline for this? Well, we're working 
very uh, closely with the US regulators at the moment to have our label uh, enhanced to give us that HCC indication in the US. We've had our pre-submission meeting with the FDA. So we're working through the process of getting our application lodged by the end of our fiscal year, which is uh, end, of, uh, end of June 2018. So we're, we're marching towards that, uh, that, that milestone event. We're working also with the Japanese authorities to uh, explore our regulatory pathway in that jurisdiction. And a little bit later, we'll, be, we'll start to open the dialogue with the, uh, the Chinese regulators. So that's on geographical expansion. We have a bunch of other initiatives we're working towards, and we've announced some of these at our recent annual general meeting. So we're working on initiatives to get our product more rapidly to our customers. We're working to expand within existing markets by new offerings. So for example, in the United States, we've got a great initiative that we're very excited about in what's called the office-based laboratory segment, which is moving into alternate site locations in the US rather than the, than the standard hospital treatment centers. And then there's a bunch of other initiatives that we've launched recently. So when you wrap up all of the geographical expansion opportunities we have, and then also the continuous improvement initiatives we've got within existing markets, the future is very bright for Certex. It sounds like it is bright. Uh, quite recently, um, a company called Varian proposed to acquire the business, didn't they? How, how have shareholders received this information? That's correct. Just last week, we entered into a, uh, a binding scheme of arrangement with Varian Medical Systems. They're located out of California in the United States of America. So all of this has been announced and we're, we're working towards to close that transaction in about two to three months time. Our shareholders so far have overwhelmingly supported the deal. However, we've not had the shareholder vote yet, so we won't know until the shareholder vote has taken place. But I've received emails and calls from a number of our very significant shareholders, and they've all been very, very supportive. Andrew, those are, that's all the questions that I have for you today. Before we wrap up, is there anything else that you'd like to um, uh, address or, or add? Look, the only thing I'd add is my gratitude for all the people within Certex. It really is a wonderful company, but what makes it wonderful is all the people that I have the pleasure of working with. So I guess my closing remarks, I'd like to thank everyone that I work with. Uh, this company is built on people and they're the ones that are making it happen. So uh, well done and congrats to everyone who contributes to Certex. Uh, Andrew, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Have a great day. This has been a production of BoardroomBroadcasts.com, a division of Romulus Rising Proprietary Limited, all rights reserved. You can stay up to date with all our content by visiting www.BoardroomBroadcasts.com and clicking on subscribe.